Yo, what's up guys, it's Zero here, and welcome to the Tenpai Dragon Basic Guide. And uh, I know you're thinking, you know, you came to me because, you know, I'm Asian, I get it. Tenpai Dragon, Sangen, it's very Asian. All right, so let's talk about what Tenpai Dragon is. So what they are, they're just a bunch of fire dragons, and all they're trying to do is OTK the opponent. They love to go second, and uh, don't, don't, don't make them go first, man. It's, it's, it's bad for them, but let's go through each cards and uh, see what they're really up to. So the best way to break it down is uh, pretty much all the one card starters, you know, we'll put right here. Uh, there's a lot of them, okay? But they all try to get to the same point, and that's to try and get to Zongdora uh, out on the field with a Fedora. So that's pretty much what all these cards can get to. Uh, so let's start with Zongdora, the, the important one, I would say. Uh, they all have this first effect where once per turn during the battle phase, you can immediately, after this effect resolves, Synchro 7 using this card you control. So they all have that, all the main monsters uh, have that effect. And the once per turn is a soft once per turn. So if you revive it back, which, which will uh, actually happen quite a few times, you'll be able to use it again on that monster instead. So yeah, they all have this effect. It kind of helps with dodging stuff uh, if your monsters get targeted. But um, either way, uh, this will be a lot of the reason why you can OTK people. And for the second effect, if you control a fire dragon, you can put some in this card from your hand. So this is like your extender. This, this card is really important for setting up turn one too because there's not really that many plays you can do so um yeah it helps with that and uh it does, this is why this is an extender if you draw it and for its last effect this is really important at the start of the damage step if a monster battles you can spider summon one level four lower fire dragon monster from your deck except you know zongdora this is really important because you know first part start of damage step so you can't ash blossom this uh second it's uh if a monster battles so it doesn't have to be zongdora that attacks it could be any other monster so if you had to have make weird sequences you can make another monster trigger zongdora any monster you're missing you get it out for free just like that so this is really important and it's a level four tuner so you know four plus you know a lot of different numbers you can get some cool synchros with that then we could talk about Bidora. so Bidora uh, on normal or special summon can add you a sand again spell or trap uh, and you can either add it to hand or set it and there's a field spell that you would want to set so you can play around joel just something to keep note of uh its second effect is um you take no battle damage from battles involving your fire dragon monsters and then of course the once per turn during the battle phase synchro summon using this monster so pretty simple it's a level three keep that in mind uh three plus four seven all right we're gonna be using that later uh and then we have tenpai dragon fedora so this one is really important is part of what makes it all work but you don't really want to draw this card on normal or special summon or at the start of damage step if a monster battles you can target a level four lower fire dragon monster in your graveyard and special summon it so three different trigger conditions which is pretty cool uh this is your way to uh get your monsters that you use to synchro summon back during the battle phase uh and of course it has a second effect but this time it's fire dragon monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle and then you pair that with the other monster i mean you take no damage and they can't be destroyed by battle which would be pretty good in the mirror match actually and then of course the uh once per turn during the battle phase quick quick effect synchro summon so always have that and it's also a level three uh fire dragon so uh bydor and fedora uh fulfill like the same uh synchro requirements then we can go to the spells so first up we have our field spell pretty cool field spell i'm not gonna lie fire dragon monsters you control are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects only during main phase one though it lets you add a, any tenpai dragon you need and uh also has a cool effect where if this card is destroyed during the battle phase you could target a dragon synchro monster you control and double its attack. And there's a couple of uh, synchro monsters where, you know, they, they get a little they get a little chunky if they, if they get this effect off. And then we have Sangen Kaimen. So this card is a uh, really strong quick play spell, but you can add this during battle phase by summoning the Baidora and then activate it during battle phase to then summon one of your tenpai dragons so uh yeah you get both effects during the battle phase and now we gotta talk about the synchro monsters so our first synchro monster the most important one the level seven dragon synchro uh this one's pretty good it, this will be what makes it all work all right let's just go through it if this card is synchro summon you can target one fire dragon monster in your graveyard special summon it also you cannot spider summon monsters for the rest of the turn except dragon monsters so you get locked into dragons but let's be real you know who, who cares getting locked into dragons is like like literally nothing <laughs> this one helps you get back your level three and of course it's a tuner so it's a level seven tuner where you can revive a level three monster and those monsters can attack so this is how you get a lot of damage on board if three or more attacks have been declared this turn quick effect you can special summon this card 
from your graveyard, then you can destroy one spell or trap on the field. So this is how you're able to OTK, where you synchro this off into a level 10 dragon synchro. You can special it back and pop the field spell to then boost that level 10 dragon synchro or whatever, whichever has some more attack. That's a lot of damage on board. You can only use this effect oh, once per duel, but I mean, let's be real. If you're not killing, you, you lost. That's that's it. And then for the last synchro dragon we have up here, we have the Sangen Super Dragon Transcend Dragon. I don't know if the name will be the same, but uh, you know, that, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so its effect is if this card is single summon, you can change all monsters on the field to attack position. Opponent's monsters must attack if able. Uh, but then also your opponent cannot activate cards or effects during the battle phase. Our opponent not being able to activate cards or effects during the battle phase can be pretty relevant. Although it is unfortunate that it's on the level 10 Dragon Synchro. So by that point, they would have already activated effects. So it's kind of a weird thing, but putting all your opponent's monsters to attack position uh, can probably help you OTK. And then this, has, this one has the same effect where if three or more attacks has been declared, you can quick effect a special summon this back from the graveyard, and then you can destroy one card on the field. So this one doesn't have to be a spell or trap. You can destroy your card or their card, probably their card. All right, that's all of the main Tenpai Dragons. And of course, we can start talking about some of the cards that you're definitely going to want to play in like the extra deck or whatever. Um, we can just start off. I mean, let's, let's just be real. Uh, this card has been spiked up in price a lot, uh, Trident Dragon. So this card is good, obviously, because uh, you can pop your own cards. And if you pop your field spell, it gets a 6k attack and it can attack one more time. And if you pop another card, it can attack another. Uh, this card can theoretically get 18,000 damage on an open field. Um, I don't know. I guess you might need to do that if you get like Spooky Dogwood. Uh, but this card by itself can do a lot of damage. So this card is definitely, uh, it's probably a must play. Although the price does kind of suck at where it's at. And we can't talk about Dragon Deck without putting Dissipator in. All right, this card is just generically good in a, in a deck like this where you get Dragon Locked. Uh, you might just want to end on a Dissipator anyways. Or if Dissipator can kill, um, then you just make Dissipator and then attack with that. So uh, it's just like that. It's pretty good anyways. Um, you could potentially end on this card on your turn one. So uh, that's why you definitely want to play this. That's a level seven dragons we can go into. Black Rose Dragon. Yes, we love Black Rose. Uh, so Black Rose, you know, just a board nuke during the battle phase can be pretty good. Um, it is a fire dragon too. So maybe there's some synergy there. And then other than that, uh, it's just some generic links. Like because it's a dragon deck, we can play Striker Dragon into SP Little Knight. This is the classic combo, right? This is a, uh, a free banish. You know, other cards use Link Creable and all that. We have Striker Dragon. So you definitely just play that. Some cards I would highly recommend to be playing uh, just as like a somewhat pseudo engine. Uh, Bistials, although I would not probably be playing Bistials as a whole as an engine. Uh, I would just be playing it as hand traps because uh, Bistials are level 6 and you have a level 4 Dragon Tuner. So you know what that means, you know, we can do some cool stuff with that. Uh, and also it's just during the battle phase, it's another 2500 damage. So that's pretty strong. Alright, now I just want to show you guys uh, kind of like a quick thing on how Tenpai Dragons work. So, I mean, it'll be a case-by-case -case kind of difference on how you play out a turn because we're going second, so we're going to break a board as we kill. But uh, for the most part, it's going to look something like this, right? This is our one-card starter, our Zongdor, normal summon. Uh, we go into the battle phase and then attack, and we can special summon out by Dora. And then by Dora out can add a Sangen spell trap. We can add the Sangen Kaimen, and this one can then add and then also special because we're in the battle phase. So uh, we get our damage in, of course, with the Zongdora if they have like an open field. We go Kaiman to summon out Fedora. So now we have all three, the Tenpai Dragons. This is typically your um, your most optimal scenarios where you get all three of the dragons out. Um, and then, of course, each one can attack. And uh, and then you're able to activate to Synchro Summon and make that level 7 uh, Tuner Dragon, like I said. And you can special back uh, by Dora. Then it doesn't really matter because you're probably going to be specialing back all of them anyways. Uh, then the cool thing here, you know, of course, another monster attacks. You're going to summon out. And of course, these Tenpai Dragons can all attack again uh, once they revive out from the graveyard. So this is how you're getting out so much damage is uh, in this case is because there's so many of these small monsters. And of course, you can keep synchroing off, right? We could have attacked with this one, but we didn't because, uh, you know, they're, they're about to die. So I can't showcase that. Uh, we can make the level 10 dragon. We can special out again because we attacked three times at least. Uh, you, can also, you can also even do this while they have monsters on board anyways. Because you have um, the Fedora, which prevents your monsters from being destroyed by battle. So even if they're in attack position, who cares, right? They don't. Our monsters aren't getting destroyed by battle. So you can keep attacking to get these set up. Usually attack uh, three or more times, and then uh, of course you can keep synchroing. 
here's where that trident dragon comes in like after you attack with uh this sangen dragon you can then pop your own dragons right here uh and then they can special summon out so then your trident dragon has here has three attacks at 3k and you have another attack on this one so like by itself without the field spell of course this was already like over 20,000 damage which is uh pretty crazy and that was only off of one card so uh i mean that's a lot of damage if i do say this to myself so i mean it's just pretty simple on like an open board state you can kind of freestyle how you want to do it of course we could have gotten like safer and like made other synchros like we have like baron if we wanted to uh assuming we didn't get locked before that and we had like more bodies on board uh we had like dissipator like all this other stuff we could have done but this is the most simple line that you're probably going to be going into most of the time just to end the game all right now here's a cool combo where if they make you go first and you have a card like dimensional shifter with abyss seal so what you can do here is uh we're gonna end on a little bit more than seals pass we're gonna do something cool here all right so we're gonna go a by door of course add the quick play spell to let you add a uh, fire dragon uh, assuming we don't want to discard one of our cards but you could go for this field spell instead um so then you add the Zongdor, which can spider summon itself. And then you can go Magnemut, banish our Dimension Shifter. Of course, Magnemut, get our end phase add. Then we can go for a Dissipator. And then Dissipator summon back our Magnemut. And then here, two dragons? Two dragons, seals, baby. So we got seals, Dissipator right here. And of course, you know, because we're playing Magnemut, end phase add, you know, we add one of the Tenpai dragons. So, hey, go first. We actually want to get shipped. <laughs> we could make a better end board with it, which is so funny to me. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this is like the best we could probably do going first, assuming it's like mostly pure and only using Bissels as hand traps. Um, this seals seals with Dissipator is actually probably still enough with the shifter active. So hey, we take that. We take that. All right, so this is pretty much what a Tenpai Dragon Douglas will probably look like if you're playing at pure. Um, give or give or take all these 25 uh, non-engine cards could be any other cards that fit the bill um, your tempai dragon is pretty much all maxed out here except fedora which is the only like not one ca one card starter um, but everything else you know this is all you need you could be playing other consistency cards like gold sarcophagus and like blaster but i don't really think that's like too worth it but i, I don't know we'll see uh so you know just a bunch of hand traps going second cards i i like cards like fenrir in this deck because uh helps you go first and second because if they make you go first you're not putting up much let's be real here so fenrir definitely helps with that and then uh for the extra deck all our level sevens and tens that we were talking about uh, i did cut kui belt because it didn't really fit uh because we're playing the princess otk line um if we get two fires out or like you know a dragon or like two monsters at least one of them being fire and they have a fire card uh, we can go into Hida, into Princess, into Salaman Great Raging Phoenix, into Zelantis, uh, which is an OTK line, uh, which will help if your opponent is playing D Barrier. So this is actually worth putting in. Uh, and of course, having a Princess in Grave is never like a bad thing. Uh, and the deck is like so open. But other than that, all the simple stuff that I already mentioned, uh, side deck can be a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, whatever fits the bill, like I don't have Nib in here, but you could probably be playing Nib. It just kind of works a little weird with like Fenrir Panker Tops sometimes. But uh, but yeah, Nib is definitely another good option. Uh, whatever like you're able to do to just kill the opponent. That's all. Just just put any uh, any uh, just put any non-engine card that helps you kill. That's basically all this is. Now for the pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros. This deck is relatively simple to play. Like once you get it down, you got it down. All the lines lead to the same thing like three plus four seven seven plus three ten that's it that's all you need for ten pie dragon let's be real uh or like two dragons seals that's it uh it's, it's as simple as that um other than that uh the deck is pretty good at killing so if you're going second you're very likely gonna be able to put up a lot of damage it's whether the fact whether your hand traps or not is enough to stop your opponent from going full combo or to break the board uh that's pretty much it Another thing that's good is uh, since there's so much non engine, uh, you're able to just put in whatever fits the meta right now. Like right now, uh, Shifter is pretty good. So you can build around Shifter. Uh, I guess Droplet kind of conflicts with that, but Droplet's just good generically. Uh, like, you know, you just put all these all these Ghost Second cards. Uh, ghost Second cards have been pretty strong. Uh, so that, yeah, that, that's that. Another pro is uh, this deck is relatively small in engine size. So you could combine it with something uh i think i've seen people playing like rockets with this which like you know kind of makes sense they're all dragons anyways 
uh, level four tuner level threes we can still do the same thing with like tracer and recharger and all of that so uh that's also another avenue to explore this is also still busy stuff you could do although it doesn't work nearly as well because there's a fire but you know you get the idea now for the cons this deck um it's not as good because max c isn't quite in the format so the reason why it's really good in ocg i think it's paired with the fact that max c isn't really good against this deck because the hand traps you want to draw won't stop it or it'll stop it too late right like they're playing cards like nib uh they're playing cards like effect veiler which don't really work off max c because we're gonna be in the battle phase so uh with that out of the way you know more people can be playing stuff like imperm uh ash blossom ghost spell crow which do hurt uh, a little bit more and um i guess joel doesn't really hurt this deck too much actually yeah not, not at all but yeah so is the the fact with maxi not being here does make it uh, kind of worse another thing is this deck is very linear so um your opponent can easily stop it all right so that's gonna be it for me uh this is about all i got for the basic guide i'm probably gonna be playing more of this deck because i do I do like dragons, all right? And uh, this, if we can make Dissipator, I'm making Dissipator. I don't care, uh, even in a deck like this. But this seems like a fun deck. Uh, just go second, OTK. There's probably going to be a bunch of this at Locals. So make sure you get your knowledge in on this deck and how it plays so uh, so that you're ready uh, to be able to beat the deck at Locals because um, this deck might actually be taking some names very early on and maybe even at the regional level too. Maybe even YCS. I can see this deck possibly performing, but probably not that much but we'll see we'll keep an eye out for it who knows there's a, it's very unexplored here in the tcg someone's probably gonna cook up some crazy combination with these monsters but we won't know until we see it all right so that's gonna be it for me let me know about what you guys think about tempo dragons down below in the comments and uh, i'll see you guys later right peace out